lips to in front of it. And once again, I'm here with my counterparts, Mr. DJ PRS1 and the Queen of Sandy B. So hi everybody, thank you for coming to join us in our 20th celebration of our 20th episode. So we got a good show for y'all tonight. We got some awesome guests here today. So um, I'm gonna pass the mic around. We're gonna let everybody excuse themselves. So we're gonna start with Mr. Matthew here. We're gonna start. Okay, I gotta stand up. What's going on, good people? My name is Chauncey, but I'm also known as Chauncey the Artist. I just want to thank Savvy E and them guys in the back <laughs> for uh, inviting me to this wonderful event. I'm glad to be here, I'm honored to be here. Peace. My name is Jada. I also go by Jay Aura. I am unpublished model, singer, songwriter. Um, I'm also one of uh, Miss Sadie's models for Sadie Events. And um, I'm happy to be here. I like to wear um, cute things. And so uh, that's all I need. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez. <sighs> What's going on, world? This is actor Lamont Elliott, AKA LA. Simple as that. Next. discussing is exporting your partner sexually, intimacy, and mentally, bringing out the unknown. So, we got a couple special guests here with us to discuss this stuff, and you know how we do on Good Vibes TV, we talk a whole bunch of crap after. Um, so, without further ado, Sandy. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, um, we have a special guest here tonight. Um, can you stand up for me, please? So can you just tell us a little bit about your um your body training? Oh, okay, yes. Okay, do I need to pull them out or okay. So a part of the collective of Love Simone Shop is enhancement toys. So we cater to singles and relationships, but we want to make sure that we're inclusive. So you can use this in your solo time or you can use it with your partner. You got tangled things, it's none of my business. <laughs> but your toys can go around however you want as long as you clean them, okay? So I'm gonna show a couple toys. And my kid. Yeah, I keep my kid. <laughs> okay, so since this one is on top, this is for my males. For all y'all. Observe. So your strong point goes here. Did you say your strong point? Your strong point, yeah, you know. <laughs> keep it fast and you don't fix it. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you can probably see from over here what the vibration is going to look like. And now it has a lot of different, it has about seven different vibration patterns and intensities. So literally, you can use it by yourself or you can use it with your partner. So I always recommend guys to get this to use with their partner so that you can enhance what you enjoy as far as pleasure, whether it be oral sex or hand on, whatever it might be. And now with your partner, they're able to use it on you and see how you respond to it. So it's not just like, you know, I got this twin I'm using on my own. It's like my queen is going to see what I enjoy and how I want to be touched and how I want to feel. So this one here is for my guys. How much? Oh. <laughs> 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 All right, so I'm going to change this week. All right. So now, this right here is my favorite toy. It's under my pillow. It's 
is my baby. This is not the actual one, this is this plate, so just so y'all know, this is for the ladies. All right, this is a clip stimulator. So literally on our clip, it goes like a vacuum, it's like. So literally, we tap out. Just <laughs> like, it's, it's a tap out like instrument and it starts at a slow vibration and then it increases at your own speed. So I like to call it perfect hit because it's super soft and it's intentional. Uh -huh. So it goes exactly where it needs to go, when it's supposed to go. And guys, don't be intimidated because it will never replace intimacy. So if you want to learn how to use it on your partner, pay attention. Is that the same thing that you use in the stores to take the temperature? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if they put that function on it, you like here, here. <laughs> yes, it is. So you can take it in the shower. Yep. You know where you're going with this. I see your ideas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now this last story I'm going to talk to talk about really quick is a cop ring, and then it comes. Who got one? Okay. I'm not surprised. Okay, hey, like you. They sell them at CVS with cars. Wait. Yes. I'm in conversation with CVS. CVS be selling a couple. Um, yeah. We got oh, I mean, now I have to go on CVS. I thought I just had like bedroom candy or something like that. Look, I got CVS. They got massagers. There you go. Oh, the mouth massager. Okay, so the cop right here, it helps to enhance your sexual experience as a couple. Because it has a vibration, it has the ring, and it has the rabbit on it. And now what the rabbit does for the female, it hits that spot. And to it. Yep. And then it also adds a vibration, but for the male, it makes you a lot stronger and more erect, and you last a lot longer. And in some cases, if you know how to control your breathing, you can know, go for two, three rounds. Cause some people don't do that. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> and now, on the bondage side, y'all want to talk about that? Yes, Lord, please. Y'all have any questions so far? I'm learning. So, <laughs> yes, I'm learning. We got any questions so far? It's a 50 shades actually, yes. No, look, I only brought one. I didn't bring a lot. I don't, I don't want to scare the people away. So this one, I just brought a leash and a collar. Mm. Right. So who will use this? He said the sound he right, right, right. <laughs> Oh, please, let me put it on you. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was ready. Yeah. 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 That's why you need the leash. You have control. Okay. 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 Alright, so that's why you need the leash. You got to control. I'm going to turn you away, friend. Uh, you going to wear this the whole time? Uh, if you want me to. Ooh, I know how to be obedient. Mm. Okay, let me oh. get a cry. Okay, I like you. <laughs> right. yeah, as you can see, friends, this is how quick it can happen.
we want to be, um, we want to be creative, we want to explore, you know, but at the same time, you know, we're insecure, you know. Um, and for example, those two things, right? I know. But I said to a lot of men, and they get intimidated because you know exactly where you place that to and how long it's going to take to get you off. And every woman is different. So, if I'm to it, I got to learn about it. And some of us aren't rich. You know, um, I've been with women where Easy. Then 15 minutes, probably at 4 or 5. I've never met a player. It takes 45 minutes just to get you on. Okay? Yeah! My fault. You can use my phone. We got some fun with this. I'm scared. I'm scared. It's just when we're by ourselves and we are actually what's we care about, you know, we would like to uh, have a conversation. What is it that I do that you like? Um, how, how long should I do it? Or once I'm doing this, should I do something else at the same time? Because I learned, like, um, uh, uh, some women can only uh, work as if you put the levels like at the same time, you know. Um, or you touch them in a certain area when you're having sex with them. You know, or they can only come when you interview them. But it's a certain way you do it. You can't try to destroy them from the back. You said that then. You, you know, so. Okay. <laughs> but you got to say that. You know, but when you watch your movies uh, as a young man, you know, because if porn is an to too. You turn it on certain movies and when they show their love scenes, the love scenes are quick and it's aggressive. So for a young boy, 13, 14, sneaking to watch movies and stuff, you know, you see this man, he got her bent over, he just tearing it up and she's screaming. And that's sex to us. That's sex to us. You know, but, but it's not. It, it's not, but, but, but we don't know that. It can get to that point, but that's not all. <laughs> so I don't think there's anything wrong with aggressive sex. I don't think there's anything wrong with if someone likes to mix up with their pain and with their pleasure. Because it may be, you know, a way to um, release a certain thing that they can't really, like, scratch it, an itch that they can't really scratch, you feel me? You, and then they'll choke you, and then they'll spank you, and then they'll scratch, you know what I mean? But at the same time, like, you gotta get there. So, like, oh my gosh, the vagina does so many wonderful things. And I just feel like if you, <laughs> if you take your time with her, you know, but you, so you can get to that like snack, 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 but you can't just, you can't just be that the whole time. Because I'm just telling you what, you want to see something dry, it's not going to work. Anybody else? Yes, that was to speak to the both points that were brought up. Like, you made a great point as far as how media has how we look at and expect sex because even if you do have access to porn, like what you see on the front page for all porn is like a girl with seven guys around her, a girl with eyes watering, gay, and you don't even see us if we're being completely honest. So the media doesn't represent the full story, but that doesn't mean that it's not there because I'm pretty sure you stumbled across like a video on like Pornhub or something. Where somebody in their house with their phone is falling on the ground, it's a, it's a rare angle. And we all know that that's real sex. Like, they don't actually do it. And there's times where you might see someone with a leash on, you might see someone getting smacked, or you might see someone in a, in a more realistic way. And that's the contrast that we kind of have to pay attention to when we're educating ourselves through the media. Because, of course, we're going to be pushed all this stuff that's not realistic to us. But if we take the time to do the research, just like how you might find an article and it says coronavirus is in your home. If you're going to research it, go through a lot of articles and be like, okay, well, where is it at? Is it real? Is it true? Is it fake? Like, whatever it is, 
we're going to do the research. So that's the same that we have to have, let's say, an attitude towards intimacy. Like, we have to have it. And then to the female body, or just even the body in general, you can be turned on by getting smacked one day, and you might absolutely hate the second day. And that's like the most exciting part of sex and intimacy because you're able to rediscover your partner literally every time I have sex. Like, sex should never be boring. Because literally, you can have an attitude and you have the most aggressive, passionate sex you've ever had in your life. But then you might come in, you had a long day, you just want to kiss, love, ooh, I miss you, baby, mm, mm, type of sex. And you know, that might be fulfilling that day. But if you're, if y'all are on the same page and y'all can't have that conversation, then there's more to be dug up in that and in your relationship. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Tell somebody you have to take me on a date, you have to court me. They're like, oh, that's all you women want. You want me to spend all this money on you? And it's like, no, I didn't actually spend money on me. I said, you have to take me out on a date. You have to court me the way that your father courted your mother or your grandfather courted your grandmother. And it, that's the, the difference between, you know, growing up in a two family home and seeing that and understanding your value and your parents instilling that in you. Like, I mean, I couldn't even call my phone without speaking to my parents, addressing them. Like, that's how I was raised. So, um, you know, it's a lot of young guys that come to me. There's a lot of older guys that come to me. And it's the same way across the board. You have to come correct. You have to court me. You gotta have, bring it all on the table. And I bring the same energy too, you know? One day I'm gonna pay for it, one day you're gonna pay for it. One day you're plan, one day I'll plan. But you have to show me that you're worth my time because there's a lot of women that aren't like me out there. You know, so. True that, true that. Thank you very much for the ball being on with it. Speak on this. I uh, we had two shows on uh, ordinance. Um, we can't compete. We cannot compete. If you can take uh, that toy that you, that you love that's under your pillow and go right there and you get off in six minutes, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, because we, we just can't compete. And it's, and it's, it's uh, a responsibility for some men. And uh, it's scary a lot of men. A lot of men they won't say. I don't care. Because after 17 minutes, you should have loved. But that's the piece of it right there. Like, um, when it comes down to it, first of all, it's not competition. Um, when it comes down to sex, they will never like ultimately every woman wants to be touched, they want to get you moaned, they want to get you grabbed, they want to be squeezed, they, they need to hear that, like they need that, like they need to let everyone smell the pheromones, they need that attraction, yeah, like they need it on their partner, so no matter how quick, and point five, point seven, whatever it might be that you can use a toy to get you where you want, you still have an ultimate desire for interaction with someone else. So, when you guys get intimidated, it's because of a lack of understanding. You don't understand why we choose to use the toys and what we're trying to execute with them. Of course, there's some women who are, they, their mentality is, I'm trying to replace a man. But ultimately, when you have a toy, it's because you're lacking something. And when you're lacking something, that means there's a lack of conversation. So if you're not able to communicate effectively to your partner, like, I need 27 minutes of foreplay. 
before we start. So when we get into it, your 17 minutes match mine, you know, with whatever the match adds up to be, and we can be close. Like I can come once, you can come once, or whatever the it might be. So that's where the mentality just has to change. And when you think about it, men have been masturbating way longer than women have. Women don't have the opportunity to be taught, like, you know, you can play with yourself if you want to. That's something that a few women will stumble upon in the early age, but men, you know from the time you wake up that one time, and it's up from that day on, every morning you're masturbating. And whether you're watching porn, looking at magazines, whatever media you choose to use, think about how old you were when you started doing that. So if you flip the roles, how do we compete when you have been learning how to pleasure yourself your entire life? How do we compete when we're now discovering that we can touch ourselves? We're now feeling like it's okay for us to do it on our own without anybody's help. I think it's a little different. How? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you how. <laughs> And I got to speak for everybody up there, all men. When I masturbate, it's my hand and my dick. <laughs> That's it. When y'all masturbate, it's your hand, your tool, your hand, you're playing with your nipples, you're doing all of this. Y'all get into it. Who <laughs> don't get into it? We, we keep going back to the, the scene we like to do. But we don't feel ourselves and we don't let them, you know. I, I strongly feel like I can speak for everybody. We're not doing it. Our masturbation is a little different than y'all. It's the goal we're trying to reach. We're trying it's to reach. It's the same goal. That's all we It's the same goal. So, I, I watch porn. Okay. You do too. Oh, well, no. I just got to turn on me. No, I have all the messages. They don't. They don't. What was I saying? I'm saying something about sex. You said you watch porn. Okay, so okay, yeah, so I watch porn, and I, I love watching ladies get off. Like I said, y'all, y'all just—it's just something about the body, um, the way you breathe. Uh, maybe it's how uh, I like the shape of your vagina, you shave or something. It's different. It's intimate. It's beautiful. Men's masturbation is nonsense. Hold up. <laughs> that's it. Look, I like to watch men. Look, I want to say it. Yeah, that's something. Thank you. That's something that I like to watch. It gets me on. It turns me on, like, for real. So, you might not think that. What you going on? <laughs> you might not think that um, it does anything for women, but that's something that turns me on. I really like to watch a man masturbate. So, if you saw a man masturbate, Rubbing on his nipples. Oh, no, no, no. That's going to turn you on? Yes, sir. And you got to tell me to tie up while I'm doing it. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. 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 Are you learning anything? Uh, I'm going to ask one. Are you learning? Well, Pinky, he did that You know, it's like really um, sexy to me is when a man is masturbating and I can't touch him. You know what I mean? It really, really drives me crazy. So, that's yeah. That's so I like stuff like that. You know, I like to watch men do a lot of stuff to themselves, and I'm just sitting there just watching. Hand me tied to the chair, the bed, the door, the banister, whatever you need to hand me tied to. But that drives me crazy. So um, don't think that it don't. Some women maybe, but I'm very in touch with my touch with my It's a lot of things that I like. I just haven't found someone that can match it. That's all. I, I hope and pray come Monday morning. <laughs> The five bucks are still in the pool. I hope you cry. The six is you push. I hope you cry. Do we have anybody say anything? Or are we good? We're good for that. We're good for that. Everybody say nothing. They're probably stuck. They're probably stuck. They're looking at the lovely ladies. They're probably hoping that Sean. Take off his shirt. <laughs> they probably want to show him with the collar on, no shirt. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I hate, I hate this man. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I 
How do you make a person uh, comfortable? Because a lot of people are intimidated when it comes to being outside the box, when it comes to sex. Um, I, I've actually slept with a lot of women because their men wasn't thinking outside the box. And I thank those dudes for not going their partner relationship. Because it added to my character. <laughs> <laughs> Now you stop it. Okay. Right, we have a lot of we have a lot of guys. I'm sure you have a lot of women who, um, like, uh, I had this thing for the commanders in the handcuffing. Straps up, come to me. I love that shit. Oh, restrain me, damn it. I love that shit. You see, like, it's just still not at all. I love that shit. But you got a lot of people who are, you know, they're scared, they're paranoid. Um, they, they just won't open up. And Eventually, it affects a relationship. Like I said, you know, a lot of dudes out there are like, they're not doing their part because I did it for But how do you, how do you, you got a whole box. Like, you got a transformer. <laughs> you know, and, and it's not so quite sure uh, if you were somebody and got one for the first time, you're going to see that box. <laughs> he's not going to miss you in the house. I'm sure if y'all had a conversation, if y'all had a conversation, he knows that box. Right. <laughs> how, how, do you keep, how do you keep people make a book and not get intimidated? Oh, okay, so two things. Um, first, you forecast it. Like, like Dominic mentioned, you should be courting the people that you're talking to, and that's on both sides. Because if you don't know this person and you just rushed into it, your expectations of sex, you can try and have it high, but how do you expect for someone to know exactly what you want? Like, I can get What I tell people to do is to a you. That's literally like a worksheet from A to Z of all the sexual activities under the, like that it is. And you literally go through and you're just like, yes, I want to do this today with you. Then it's like, maybe, like I'm curious, you might do this if I'm drunk, if I'm sober, I don't know yet. And then you have like a hard nose. But like that entire list allows you to have a conversation that's actually productive because you guys can see like, okay, my partner says they're a picnic token. You know, my partner says he may be on the angle. But, you know, those are things that you can go through without it being any shame, without it being like a random text like, hey, I want you to spit in my mouth next time we have sex. And you're just like, where did this come from? <laughs> like, you know, it's not random. It's actually a planned conversation. So I think a lot of times it, it just turns into us being adults. And you have <laughs> 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 but no, that is honestly like literally if you guys are able to have that adult conversation, then it's gonna be it's gonna turn into great sex. But if you are fumbling around, you don't think you can find the words and you don't think you'd be having sex with that person. Because ultimately y'all just gonna be fucking. And that's it. And if it's good sometimes, great. If it's bad other times, then great. But if you don't take the steps to say like, okay, this is what I need. To feel good. This is what I need more next time, or this is what I need less of next time. That's how you have a good sexual experience with a partner. And it doesn't have to be with just one, it can be two, it can be whatever your your passion is and however you love, but it's just one of those things like it's a communication thing. And I always preach to people get a pink sheet, look at it, do it for yourself so you can look and be like, what is vlogging? Google help me. <laughs> like, for help me. And then you go from there because you right now you don't know what you don't know. At the end of the day, media doesn't help you and show you. I mean, Fifty Shades of Grey is the only. I mean, and then they got like the 365 movie. Like yeah, like those are the only things right now that are really showing you BDSM and kink. But is that the best representation? Probably not. <laughs> but if you have something that makes your wheels turn and you're like curious and it's like okay, let me start searching for this. Let me see what this is. I might let this person try this on me. I might let that person try it on me. I would never. Anyone do this to me. Like, you have that option to you. Is that, that kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it helps, it helps you, brother. You look scared. I don't have any wine. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a question for the guys. So, what she just said, because y'all said real quiet, I'm having a moment here. I'm Right, but my whole thing is, what is y'all, by him her, what is y'all thought pattern? Like, when you find someone that you want to be with, and 
um, be intimate with them. Like, what is y'all thought pattern of things that she's saying? Because a lot of times, men seem like they're so afraid to get to go there. You know, a lot of women is open, most of them. But a lot of men, y'all so reserved because y'all fear that somebody's always say, don't touch my butt because that's gay. And I don't think it's gay. I don't think there's nothing about uh, touching a man's butt while you being intimate is not in gay. So my thing is, what? Right, because my thing is, when the man was talking to me, that's what I'm ready for. Right, so you wanna, cause you want to push him closer to you, inside of me. So my thing is, So Mr. Matthew, so how do you feel about that? How do you feel about when you've been intimate with a woman and they're touching you like that? Do you think it's gay? Uh, it's gay. I don't think it's gay, but it's just something that um, <laughs> I'm a little uncomfortable with. Well, why? I just, I don't know, it's just the thought. It's just the thought process. Well, like, where, where, did the, where did the thoughts come from? Because I see you were a man, yeah, it's, yeah. We, we consider that that. Mm -hmm. But when you were a woman and you're trying to be intimate and exploring a whole bunch of stuff, why do you think that that's one thing that's gay? Again, I don't think it's gay. It's just, for me personally, I don't know about these guys, but it's just something that I'm uncomfortable with. Men, for me, it's the little bad. You know that thing? She grew in the door of the bed. Oh, yeah. How about that? Okay. There's a woman in the bed. Yeah. 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 So you can't, you know, speak outside the box. I'll look at the telly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like everything that I ain't done, you know, the racist people. See, I mean, I'm not, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm just saying, I feel <laughs> That I like what average guys like, you know, the basic full but you know, kissing on that, kissing, you know, the whole world. Right, but well, that's basic. Mm -hmm. Tell me something that you would do that's outside of that. <laughs> so, okay, a woman may be here say, hey, I like when you tie down and I have these things right here, I want you to tie me, da 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 da. Or, uh, what is that thing that um, you get in? And they, um, yeah, the swing, because I like that too. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, say your partner brought that to you. Would you try it? Would you be like, yeah, I'm, I'm very good when it comes to you. You don't even right? Okay. Very good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty open. Like, I, it's not, I don't think, I don't think there's nothing like that. I probably wouldn't try. Okay. So, so I mean, right. So, we am back to that. So, why is it? Very good. Now, if I say, look, this is what I'm using to build up your butt, yeah, I get that. But I'm like, I'm just touching the butt in intimacy. You, so, you know what I'm going to do? We're just kind of embarrassed. So, with me, I feel like I'm more open when I'm intoxicated. Oh, gosh. I don't know, I don't know. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that. When I'm so like, I'm being, you know, the one I'm doing. Yeah. We can probably do some shit. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that's like me being. What the fuck is that? Oh, really? No. You can't do that. What's your mom? That's mine. So, brother, right here with the wine. You should be real. These questions should be real. Uh, easy to you. So the question to you is the same thing. Why do you, why do you men think that touching the butt is gay? What is your opinion? Don't touch my ass. That's why? Why? Right. I'm not with it. Okay. I'm sexy. 
it doesn't turn me on. What? What's that? I'm gonna look at you like you crazy. Why? Why? Hey, that's fine. <laughs> so, okay, so if I go past the same woman that I like last and smack on my ass, you don't want to be chill out to you, so. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. No. Well, hey, that's important. <laughs> so I just want to speak on the topic. Because, you know, it's a weird thing. You know, you were speaking about. Um, yeah, you're not open to yeah, when you finish, you might say, But you know, for someone like me, I'm one of those people where if a guy, if I say something and a guy does something that I think is gay, I'm automatically like, oh, it's gay. So it's just what your gay art is, how open you are to certain things. Because although she's my sister and I go with her everywhere and I listen to her preach intimacy and there's no boundaries and different things like that, she'll come to me and I'm like, if a guy offers me angel beads and tells me to use them on him first, I'm not dealing with him because I'm going to think he's gay. And I'm just one of those like old school, these are the certain rules that qualify you as being gay and qualifies you as not being gay. Now I'm learning and I'm educating myself and I'm realizing that men have different pleasure points and different things like that. So, but even me, me being a female, right? But me being a female and saying that that is gay, imagine what males are saying, you know? Because you have the jailhouse talk, you have your father raising you, telling you X, Y, and Z, you have the media letting you, you know, telling you what gay is and what gay isn't. So, at the end of the day, it's just an educational conversation and then. You know, us as African Americans, and we have to get out of that box. That's, yeah. what, that's what it is. We're yeah. in a box, and I'm still in the box. You know, I'm creeping out slowly, but I'm still in the box. What is traditional? Wait, the box that we were raised in. Oh, They're all like the all races and you know things like that. That box. That's a box. No, no. <laughs> oh, you thinking like a box box? No, no. Oh. You into some stuff. No. You really have it out. <laughs> Um, the question is for me about the whole why do they think they're touching their backside and intimacy is a gay thing. I guarantee you don't like it. What is it? My opinion on it is uh, pretty much, I think it's gay as far as you caressing my ass, holding my ass. Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. There you go. Tell me you're crazy. I got problem with it. But she holds my ass as a friend. You know, that's a friend. 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 That
you have a man's man. And I know like old school thinking, you have a man's man. Now I want to explore some things with my woman, and that's not a problem. I want to make her happy. But you have to realize some things are off limits. I'm a man. I'm a man, period. Now with women, see things with women like things with women like also that naked or the thing with women, uh, and before you know uh, the whole community came about, everybody is now being themselves, and we know who everyone is and who they choose to be. You look back 30, 40, 50 years ago, the only time a woman was allowed to be creative or explore was in college, and it wasn't black women, it was white women. You understand? So our community is just catching up where the Euro community has been here for years. So for, for men, you know, especially black men who we have endured some of the harshest treatment in history, Amen. where we were forced to have sex with one another in front of our families. You know, it's different for us. And, and a lot of people they get offended, they get upset when we they hear a black man say, no, that shit is gay. Because ultimately that shit is gay. And people get offended, oh, well, fuck it, that's how you feel. But when a black man speak on it, there's more there than just an act. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I ain't gonna go into all of that because that's not what we're here for. Right. But we know, and as kids, you really don't know that you get older, you do your studies, and you learn, you have mentors, they teach you about your past. It affects you differently. So it stays up there. You know, and then when you go to jail, if you're one of the unfortunate ones to go to jail, you kind of get to experience what your ancestors went through. Because there's nothing but men in there. And you, you have men in there who will hunt you. And it's not a, a pleasure, it's a dominant name. It's to make you feel small. So it's not that we wouldn't want to experience that pleasure with our woman. But it's in your head. It's in your head, you know, because they did it to shame us in front of our women and children. Absolutely. I don't want you to look different at me. I'm still the same man who go to work, put in 40 plus hours a week. You know, because some relationships don't work. And I don't want you, you know, that guy now is like, oh shit, it's okay if I fucked you in the ass. Had your mouth on the door and all kind of banging you and all kind of crazy shit. But you now have something that you're not going to see. Why did you do that? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Relationship or whatever, there's no problem. You just go back to you. No, I'm just saying, yeah, the thing. But when we need that relationship, we're hoping and praying to God that you don't tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> bet you would. You see, you're right there, Mike. Exactly. And then we come and we date somebody that you may know or Facebook friends, and all of a sudden, y'all ain't never comment on my screen before together. <laughs> Now y'all comment on my stream. Fuck this bitch done. Why this shit? I'm paranoid because I'm actually thinking on her now because you know so we get paranoid. So we start thinking, oh God, she's gonna tell her that I, I let her do this to me and she won't know it. You know, it's it's an insecurity thing. It's an insecurity. That's because you're willing to say those things So when you are in a position to where, when you're in a position where you're on the opposite side of it, to where you've done something that you don't know you want. This like back in high school when two guys had sex with one girl. No one would ever think to say the one girl wanted to have sex with the two guys, <laughs> but it was always she had a train ran on her. But just that conversation that you have amongst men is the reason why you're insecure and you, you question if the woman's gonna be able to to say something to somebody else about what you did in the bed and how you feel like it's, it's shame or it's something that you shouldn't be doing because in all actuality, you're adults. Like, there's men out there right now that comfortably talk about how they like their nothing. 
when they get in their mixer. And that <laughs> But like this is a real thing and it's like, hey, can you exclude the the gay no. Yeah, like I'm gonna say you know, if you take the if you take the box they say the box. Caucasian before? Caucasian girl? And she never tried to get it. Oh, no. Where was she from? Yeah. That's right. And we need to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll have Mr. Johnson. So we have to talk to the ladies. Yeah. But, um, go ahead. We need to go on the booty. We need to go on the booty. Alright, so, um, we do have one comment on here, Mr. Turner. You know, we always let them come out, check us out on the show. Mr. Tran was on the show all the time. Mr. Tran said, when a woman grabs a man's ass, I don't think it's gay. Perhaps she's in the moment, especially during mm -hmm. sex. Mm -hmm. If you hit it really good, grab an ass. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, there you go. She won't care. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a compliment. Like, if you're real doing it, that means you're doing it right. And you're going to have a, um, it's gay. Okay. I can say it's gay, don't you? I don't know who. <laughs> He's a virgin, though. There you go. That's it. That's all. Yeah, I'm virgin. <laughs> 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 Alright, so when I gotta jump off the screen, um, I don't have an issue with the money grabbing my ass. My wife grabbing my ass all the time. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. But she's my wife. That's it. Nobody else grabs my ass. Um, we're gonna take a quick break. Um, we're gonna hit pause on the live stream. We're gonna be right back on the live stream. And uh, right after that, we're gonna have Mr. Chauncey, the artist. Bring it in. Stay tuned, y'all. Stay tuned. 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 St